Today's Mercedes-Benz interview of the day brought to you by Mercedes-Benz EV. Everything you love about Mercedes. Vehicles all electric, the feeling all Mercedes. Choice all yours. Learn more at mbusa.com slash EQ. Yes, Marvin. Oh, no. I was just ready for Dawn. She oh. was on the episode of Martin. Oh, she was. How long ago was that? Probably 95, 96, I want to say. Okay. Probably 96. Okay. The Olympic team year. But is that one of those where somebody's at the door and then everybody applauds when they see him? Like, <laughs> is that... Do you have the episode there? Yeah, Paul. So when Dawn Staley was a star player, she was on Team USA a bunch of times, I mean, okay. forever. All right. And so there's an episode of Martin, and Martin Martin's character is going to play basketball versus his girlfriend and her friends. Mm. And all of a sudden, her friends open the door and say, let's welcome the Olympic the women's Olympic team. And here comes Dawn Staley and Rebecca Lobo and other players. Okay. It was awesome. Uh, Dawn Staley, head coach, South Carolina women's team. What do you remember about that episode? Um... That I'm that I'm more famous for that episode than actually my my basketball career. <laughs> no, it's not. But do you have, really? Absolutely. I um I actually spoke with uh, Presbyterian, a team that's going to play in uh, Sacred Heart in the playing game uh, tonight. That will be our opponent on Friday. I met with I've actually met with both teams, but when I met with Presbyterian, the Martin Show came up. And what, is, what did they ask you about? They asked me, um, did I appear on it? Number one, they knew I did. Yeah. And then they just asked me about, you know, the, the whole production of it, because it's a lot different than what we do every day. It's, it's a sitcom. So you're there the entire week. And then you're just one day you're, you're reading your lines and that's it. And then the next day, you just you get into different segments of uh, the sitcom, and I, I just thought it was a pretty cool process. And when when we were on that show, Martin, it was by far the number one show in the country. So that's that's one of my highlights of my career. Well, you've been a Hall of Fame coach and uh, basketball player, so your second career, you've done a pretty good job there. <laughs> what do I need to have? The one thing that I absolutely have to have if I'm going to play for you is what. Um, discipline. How do you know if I have it or not? Um, I mean, I, just a, a conversation with, with your parent. Okay. That's how you tell. Is 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 that relationship that you have with your parent is a telltale sign of whether or not um, a young lady can play for for us here at South Carolina because we we're going to ask you to do some things that, um are are hard 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 and if you have a disciplined parent they've asked you to do some things that's hard that you don't like but you do it because they're asking you to do it and, and somewhere down the line you'll you'll appreciate it like my, I had a disciplined mother that I didn't like growing up I didn't like her but I am more like my mother right now <laughs> Than, than anything. And now that I'm responsible for 18 to 22 year olds, uh, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful for the way I grew up and, and the way my mother handled me. What did you learn from last year's loss to Iowa? Um, I, I learned sometimes uh, you, you gain by losing. And that's hard. That's hard to take. Last year was hard to take. But, but then you come back this year and we're, we're in the same position. Um, as far as being undefeated and having undefeated under under uh, regular season and then um, conference championship tournament season, I mean basketball is a game that you know it's it gives it gives to those who's loyal to it and I've I've sacrificed friendships I've sacrificed a lot and the game continues to give me and I it's God given uncommon favor. Like, I could not have scripted any better than how our team turned out this year uh, uh, until the third weekend of, the third <laughs> weekend of our tournament, of course. How do you explain Caitlin Clark? How do I explain it? I think she's the greatest of her time. Of her time. Now, I, and I don't, I don't want to ruffle anybody's feathers, but I also don't want to, you know, we got a rich history of women's basketball. Rich, rich. We we got a player in Brianna Stewart who won four national titles, and you 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 cannot 
you cannot forget about all the contributors of our game. Like Caitlin Clark's got brought a lot of eyes to our game and I'm really grateful for her talent. And I do think she's in incredible, like remarkable, eye catching. Um, I mean, she's got great IQ. So I, I got to give it to her. Like she is definitely a, a, a woman that continues, continues to grow our game. And I go back to Ann Meyer. I go back to Nancy Lieberman, uh, Cheryl Miller, you know, Shamik well, holds claw. I mean, they're Cynthia Cooper. There's just so many of those players. And, but I do think because of Caitlin Clark, like we're bringing back some of those names because now, which is good. And, and, and that should be. So when somebody says, is she the greatest of all time? Well, if I'm going to take the person who wins, Brianna Stewart, won four titles and was the most outstanding player in all four years. You can't do any better than that. Yeah, you can't. So, and it's nothing against Caitlin Clark and all the people that, that love her. Like I, I'm a, I'm a basketball enthusiast. I love her. Like I love what she's doing for the game. I love when she hits logo threes. I love when she hits game winning shots. I mean, all that is, is tremendous. I watch like I, I spent a lot of time watching Big Ten basketball because of her. And and that's got to be a, a lot of responsibility for her yeah. and a lot of pressure for her. And she's handled it incredibly well. Did you think you uh, could play in the NBA? The NBA? Yeah. For how long? <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I could play a game. Like I could play a game and hold my own. It's just the 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 long stretch of an 82 game season yeah. and the wear and tear those guys are big and strong and and they're the very best for a reason but you had to play against these guys i'm going to guess yeah i mean i i played a bit against some nba guys um and i mean you you go up in philly you you think you can do anything <laughs> and and north philly particularly so um so I can say that now, sitting here, you know, <laughs> being over fifty, you know, I could be an urban legend. <laughs> uh, the uh, skirmish with LSU. What role, like in the moment, what role do you play as a coach? You know, I, I, I obviously look at the the square the skirmish uh, a number of times, and I looked at myself, and I something's off about me because I was totally shocked and I stood there and I didn't do anything. And I'm looking at like activate, like this is kind of, you're, you're, you're supposed to be the protector and the peacemaker of all things. And I was like, I was caught off guard. Um, I mean, it happens. It happens. It happens in every, every sport, every sport. It just got heightened a little bit because of it was a championship. It was on ESPN and 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 the officials had to assess the situation and come up with a solution um, for for me. I just have to make sure that one um, in the moment we had to go with what the officials said. And then you and then you Monday morning quarterback it. And I just thought that 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 they got some things wrong. I do. Like what? Out of all of it, because Camila Cardoso is the only one that is is really paying the price for it. When there should have been a you know a dark cloud on a, a couple of other people as well. If if we're going to deem what she was disqualified for, because you just can't be disqualified just as a one woman show. <laughs> if there's if it's deemed a fight. The fight is not just with one person; it's with the it's with the, at least another person, and then you got to find out who incited it. Um, but I'm I'm speaking more about it than I than I have since the incident, and I I really want to put it behind, but I also want to address the fact that it happens in every other sport. Don't don't hold women's basketball to a higher standard than the other sports, um, because it's happening there. Um, Unless, unless you want to hold us in a, unless you want to hold us as a sport, because a lot of people don't think we are a sport. If you're going to hold us to the level of, of everybody else, then it's, then it's just what it is. An incident that happened in a highly competitive physical basketball game.
Talking to Don Staley, Hall of Fame head coach, uh, former college player of the year, uh, Naismith coach of the year, I think three times. That's a hell of a resume you got there. South Carolina will win the national title if what? If we don't beat ourselves. Did you beat yourself last year? Yes. Yes. I mean, l- listen, I, and, and again, as coaches, we debrief. We we talk about all the things that contributed to um, a win and a loss. Okay. And I'm going to bring up some things that people probably don't know about. Like um, we were the number one overall seed. We played on Saturday, Monday. Um, the other number one seed, which was Virginia Tech, played on Saturday, Monday. The final four is played on Friday, sorry, Saturday, Monday in the Sweet 16 Elite Eight. The final four in, in national championship game, they're played on Friday, Sunday. So those other teams played on Friday, Sunday. They got one extra, one extra day of rest going into the biggest weekend win. If there's if there's any advantage, it should go to at least the number one overall seed and at least the number one seed if they're if those are the only two that's left. Yeah. So I I we did get a rule change with that. Now the overall number one seed will play, if there's an advantage, we'll play Friday, Sunday throughout the entire tournament. Now we we griped about that, not knowing if we will ever be the overall number one seed again. And we find ourselves in that position. So um that's that's one thing. Another thing, um Caitlin Clark did what exactly what we were supposed we what she was supposed to do in our game plan. Now, who who killed us is and I, and I, I'm probably going to jack up her name is Sunanu Sunanu the big. I mean, she had about 18 points, and we just didn't factor in her being that that productive against us. And and then and then Aaliyah Boss had gotten a little bit of foul trouble um, that that the play without her for any significant time really hurts our basketball team. How's your jumper? My yeah. 15 feet. I'm deadly. Yeah. 15 feet. Don't, don't ask me to go further than that. But if, <laughs> but if I, I have to leave you open too. No, no, no. I can create my own shot. 15 feet and in, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Are you breaking ankles still, Don? No. Okay. No, nope, no, nope. I don't I don't even get in competitive competition with our team because they don't they can't control their bodies. <laughs> you could get hurt. I, easily. <laughs> easily. <laughs> uh good luck in the tournament. Great to catch up with you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. That's Dawn Staling, Hall of Fame head coach. She uh won three gold medals, three as a player, one as a coach, WNBA All Star six times. College uh, player of the year twice. College coach of the year three times. Tough to find a resume that's better than that in the history of basketball.